Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the afternoon uh, session here, uh, Creating a Culture of Care. I'm really uh, delighted to introduce this session. My name is Tom Rock. Uh, I serve as the Chief Student Affairs Officer at Teachers College, uh, the Associate Vice President. Really glad to introduce um, some of my colleagues here um, who work with me at Teachers College. And what um, this session is really about is, and you'll see in a moment, we have, uh, obviously, we're in very challenging times uh, doing this work. Um, and, and I know you all are as well. And it was really important for us at Teachers College to think about uh, situations and how we can care for our community, whether we're talking about a student, perhaps an employee, really the community at large, and certainly understanding that uh, there are crises and there are obviously some protocols in place and processes in place when there is a particular crisis, whether you have an emergency response team or a behavior threat assessment team, maybe you have both of them. Um, what we try to do at Teachers College, though, is think about it from a caring lens first, because almost every situation, especially situations with students, um, often requires some type of care, some type of intervention, some type of support. But we took that further to think about what that could look like for our community members, including faculty and staff as well. So that's why I'm really glad to have my colleagues here to, who will take us through this approach. Um, and you'll see it's a non-clinical approach in working with our students. And Lemma will talk a little bit more about that in a little while. But it's really just all about uh, caring for our community in really, really challenging times. So I think the current climate and the current situation, this is really relevant. But I really hope that you'll be able to take some of these pieces and some of this information we're going to share with you for a variety of different situations that require some care on your campus. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to look forward soon beyond the current climate and, and situation that we're in and providing care. Um, but obviously, there are other reasons and other things going on where where we hope that some of this will be really necessary and important for you and um, advocating and in and showing support. So with that, um, I'm really happy to introduce our colleagues at Teachers College. I'm joined by Robin Davis Mahoney, who is our Assistant Vice President and Chief Human Resource Officer. I'm joined by Dennis Mazzone, who's Assistant Vice President um, in, for the Office of Public Safety and Environmental Health and Safety at Teachers College. Uh, my colleague, Lemma Moliga, who's our Director of Student Support and Advocacy. And you'll be hearing from each one of them in a little bit more detail from their perspective and on how they are implementing this care, caring approach uh, based on their role on campus. But I think one thing that I hope you will learn is just how closely that we are all working together on this. I could not possibly do this work with students without my partners here um, today on, on, this, on this call, on this webinar. So um, it's really a cross-campus effort, and we're, we're aligned, we meet often, we are integrated, um, and we find that that works really well. Um, and then I guess one final thing before I'll introduce, uh, I'll turn it over to Robin, is uh, for those of you who don't know, Teachers College, we are a standalone graduate institution of roughly 5,000 students. So while we are part of Columbia University, we are also very, very separate as well. We have our own administration, we have our own staff, we have our own faculty, we have our own board of trustees that is separate from the rest of Columbia University. So we are an affiliate of Columbia, but we are a standalone institution. Um, so um, all of these colleagues here today are my colleagues at Teachers College. So with that, I will turn it over to Robin to get us into uh, talking a little bit about how uh, the approach that we've taken and how we're caring for our staff during challenging times. Good afternoon, and thank you for that, Tom. I <clears> hope <throat> everyone's having a great day and happy new year. So as Tom indicated, we do provide resources and support very much not only dedicated to what's currently going on, in our global environment and climate, but also kind of year round, there's a holistic and comprehensive approach to providing the support empathy that may be needed by the various populations within the college. So we focus obviously on staff, which are our professional staff members, 
faculty is also included within the umbrella of employees, if you will, students, and then obviously um, other stakeholders. So we're not very specific to the crisis currently in the Middle East. So some of the things that we are doing through our EAP service provider, which is TELUS Health, um, we provide targeted resources to employees and their family members to ensure that the employee is supportive, but also everyone who was in their environment has the access and the resources that they may need in this particular time of change. There's an accessible clinical team that's available that are trained professionals to really support crises across the board. But then there's also this current specific need um, around you know, what is again happening globally and how it's impacting folks here in the US as well. The counseling services are provided in different modalities. So it's really kind of a fit for purpose approach that the EAP program takes. Managers also have additional resources specifically to help them guide and direct their staff, and as well as identify what may be needed by a team member and or by even a student if a crisis has come to their attention. Lastly, we provide support you know, in specific events that are very targeted where anyone could be or feel overwhelmed. Um, they may feel that they're consumed with something that is either a danger or a perception in terms of how they're able to respond to what's happening around them. So those resources are there. We actually share the same um, EAP program with Columbia University. So again, it's very well-rounded. They understand higher education and they understand what's happening within this geographical footprint where Columbia University, Barnard, and Teachers College resides. Next slide. So specifically, again, regarding these times, the dedicated online resources, both as the, through the EAP program provider, but also within our own um, internet, intranet, excuse me. So we have information that we've either developed holistically internally, or that has been done in partnership with Columbia University, where we are targeting information that may help an employee through a specific situation. Those um, resources, and you'll see this pretty much throughout our presentations, are interconnected. So they're built in conjunction across the different offices that Tom identified. We work very closely together to ensure that there's alignment, there's reinforcement. So again, it becomes information that's available. Employees are able to access it in various locations, but it's really driving them to a consistent message and a consistent set of resources and assets to help them in a time of need. Lastly, we encourage our managers and employees to really be empowered to address what they need, ask for what they need to support them. And some of this more recently has required us to be more flexible around our hybrid and flexible work policies, where there may be protests happening or anything that's affecting an employee and they prefer to work remotely. We've given everyone a re enforcement that that is available to them if they want to make changes to their work plan. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. And we will turn over to Dennis Mazzone now to take us through uh, from a community's perspective and from a public safety lens. Thanks, Tom. Much appreciated. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, I've been at TC for just over a year now as the AVP for public safety and EHS. And since I arrived, one of my primary goals has been to make all of our community members feel welcome at TC. Um, I know that uh, Teachers College public safety team, to let them know that we're here to help, to ensure that they succeed and they flourish while they're here at TC. Um, at probably July of last summer, um, I was really excited when the student affairs team approached me and said, how would you like to make a 30 second video about public safety for new student orientation? So with that, um, I discussed it with some key members of my team. Um, I'm so pleased to say the video you're about to see has been every member of the public safety team has touched it, starred in it, edited it, done something with it. But one particular member, Julio Mendez, uh, has been with TC for over 20 years. Julio has a passion hobby for filmmaking and editing. So we put his skills to the test here and some creative license. So um, with that, Whitney, will you play that?
hopefully um, you agree with us that the message really conveys a welcoming and positive image of our public safety team and uh, something that all community members should certainly feel welcomed about. Um, so moving on, um, we created something called the TC Safe app. Um, in July, we actually launched this um, as part of our development. We partnered with a third party uh, vendor, uh, Rave Mobile. Um, we also collaborated uh, with several of our campus stakeholders when we thought about the development of this project and content. Um, and what we wound up with in June that we launched was the college's all-in-one digital safety toolbox um, available for free download in both the Google and App Store. Um, since that time, we've had over 900 downloads uh, of the app. Um, you know, I know that much of this presentation centers on the work that we've been doing collaboratively during these challenging times. And accordingly, we've seen a lot of value in this app. Community members interface and are, are driven to their, their handheld devices on a regular basis. So by putting all those um, wellness resources there in one dashboard have really had a positive impact. Um, some things I should point out, we have our student support and advocacy uh, under TC support resources. This has been completely curated to have TC support resources there. And I know Robin touched on it earlier, but those uh, resources for challenging times, as well as access at CU, any access updates, uh, even though we're separate from CU, we've now included that there. So if you go to the App Store, the Google Store, download the app, check it out, you'll find there's a lot of great resources and information there for our community members. Uh, next slide, please. So one of the other things that public safety has been doing is continue to do and actually developing more of um, is our ongoing commitment to um, training uh, through community engagement. Um, we've been working hard uh, to train our community members in things like active shooter awareness, bystander intervention, which we actually partner with Columbia's SVU team. Um, we've been recently uh, very successful in launching our, our first uh, CPR and AED for uh, faculty and staff members. Um, we offer situational awareness training, subway safety, and uh, in the summer we started, and we've probably taught about six sessions of Stop the Bleed. This is done in partnership with Mount Sinai Hospital. It's a one-hour course that teaches life-saving life um, techniques for how to recognize uh, life-threatening bleeding, including how to apply uh, direct pressure to a wound, how to pack a wound, and how to correctly apply a tourniquet. So um, a lot of great safety uh, training ongoing with our community. Next slide. So throughout my career, one of the things I've worked to do is to try to build solid relationships and partnership with peers and stakeholders, both within our enterprise and, and external. Um, so I've done the same here uh, with my peers and colleagues uh, within the public safety uh, arena, if you will, building opportunities for collaboration and engagement. And since arriving in December of 22, um, I, I've really worked to reestablish relationships uh, across the Morningside Heights. Uh, and, you know, much of this um, was because of COVID and key staffing changes. Um, we look to do some reconnections with Columbia, Barnard, International House, and even uh, as far downtown as NYU. Um, so through these engagements, we've been able to routinely share information between institutions, um, which has been really important during these challenging times with ongoing protests, ensuring overall campus safety, not only here at TC, but at Columbia and Barnard as well. Um, we've been able to host some trainings for public safety team members, including de-escalation training, which we think is so essential when it comes to uh, working in challenging times. We want our staff to be able to de-escalate a situation, uh, mental health first aid, uh, stop the bleed, and frontline supervisor training. And we're hoping to do more of this as we move into 2024. Uh, next slide, please. So... Given the current climate um, on all of our campuses and growing concerns around public safety, uh, the public safety team has been continuing this work with Columbia and Barnard, as well as the 26th precinct, to effectively share information and coordinate our safety resources across our campuses. TC Public Safety has been working closely with our president and cabinet as part of the college's ongoing response. Uh, as well as our campus partners in student affairs, HR, the Office of Diversity and Community Affairs, in response to concerns expressed by students, faculty, and staff here at Teachers College. Uh, I should note there have not been any threats 
uh, made uh, towards specific targets, institution or individuals within the Columbia community. Furthermore, there have been no on-campus offenses of bias or hate reported at TC as a result of the ongoing crisis. To date, there has been one bias incident reported to Columbia Public Safety. Uh, this occurred on the Morningside campus um, back in October of 2023. Uh, and I'm also pleased to say there was a prompt arrest that resulted uh, a few days later. Uh, despite the numerous protests that have been held um, across our community over the past several weeks and months, uh, both on and off campus, all the events have been um, largely peaceful um, and there have not been any reported altercation or incidents. And this was probably no better demonstrated than on November 9th uh, when our TC students um, participated in a coordinated walkout between Columbia and Barnard and then uh, subsequent protest in front of our college. Uh, at our main entrance at Sample Hall. And uh, during the entire event, our students, along with those who joined them in the protest, protested peacefully. Uh, they were responsive to requests about, you know, not blocking access. And there are no inter negative interactions or problems, I'm, I'm pleased to report. Uh, finally, um, should any TC community member have concerns uh, about personal or campus safety, the TC public safety team is here to meet with and discuss these concerns, as well as share any available safety resources. Um, TC community members should, you know, feel confident by virtue of the systems that we have in place, as well as our partnerships, that we're in a good position going into 2024 to keep TC and our community members and campus safe. So um, while we're navigating challenging times, we're here to work, as Tom said, collaboratively together. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Lemma to talk to you about the CARES team. Yeah, thanks, Dennis. I'm going to jump in here um, just really quickly before Lemma. Um, thank you so much for taking us through that. As I mentioned, we really could not do this work without the dedication of our public safety team at Teachers College. And so, uh, you know, we have such close collaboration with you and your team. Um, also, um, you should to note that the Teachers College public safety team, they are not police officers. I know that a lot of institutions, um, many institutions, I should say, do hire, you know, local police or something to staff their campus safety operations at Teachers College. Um, we do not. So while we have really close contact and interaction with NYPD as needed, um, these are not police officers. Um, and so we're really able to, um, you know, to to do so much great work together and uh, really appreciate everything that you and your team have done. So, and the video really encompasses that. Even if you um, weren't able to hear the sound, you got the idea and it's really a um, a nice way to, to to show the care and the work that, that you and your team are doing. So thank you for that, Dennis. And so we'll move into our student support and advocacy area. Um, so this is an office that reports into me um, as Chief Student Affairs Officer. It's a fairly new office at Teachers College. Um, and Lemma can tell you a little bit more about it. But um, we really felt like we needed something. Uh, we needed a case management approach or a cares management approach. and. Again, this is this is a non-clinical, non-clinical approach for our students as students are navigating, you know, personal, academic, all sorts of different challenges. Um, Lemma and her team will have put in place a great process and system to addressing and helping our students. Again, whether it's something in this current climate and situation in the world, or if it's something um, that, that might be um, outside of the current situation. So uh, really excited to introduce you to Lemma. Um, and one thing that we've often been saying at Teachers College, and Lemma might be tired of hearing this, but we keep saying it, is that um, to understand the work in this office, our president has said this and our students say this, they say, if you have a dilemma, go see Lemma. So with that, I turn it over to Lemma Moliga. Tom loves that rhyme, so... Um, I just want to say hello, everyone. Um, like Tom said, my name is Lama Maliga. Um, I've been here at TC for eight years. I spent seven years um, as, as the Associate Director in the Office of Residential Services, 
And like Tom shared, um, the Office of Student Support and Advocacy is fairly new. I'm really excited to be here to talk to young professionals and also just people entering the field of student affairs. It's I, I think I'm going to be biased. It's an amazing field to be a part of. So really excited to have you all here. And before I actually start, um, I just wanted to do a quick highlight um, for people who might be interested in case management. It is definitely a new area within student affairs. I think student affairs has always done case management, but um, several years ago, uh, people have actually started to name it and to actually um, separate it and being its own thing instead of, instead of having other professionals uh, in other areas also pile on case management within the work that they do. So if anyone is interested in learning more, I'd be happy to talk to you about this. Um, but also, you can also check out the Higher Education Case Management or Manager Association, which is the National or Organization for Case Managers in Higher Ed. Um, it actually started in 2011 is when it came together. So it, it kind of tells you how new this area in student affairs is. So just wanted to do that little quick plug for those of you who are entering the field. Um, as Tom shared, the Office of Student Support and Advocacy is uh, honestly, ooh, it's about a, a year a year and a semester old now, I should say, um, that we've been in existence. And really, um, I don't think TC is alone in this, where there are many different colleges as well, where students might feel lost, confused. They might feel like they're hopping around from office to office and not really um, sure of where to go to if they need any kind of support, not just academically, but also personally. Um, I think when we, Robin talked about like thinking about the whole person, same thing when we're working with students, we're really thinking about the whole student and understanding that um, there will be things that happen to a student outside of the classroom that may affect their academics. And for us, our main goal is really to be there to help connect students to resources. Um, and that way that they can actually um, be connected and find a way to be able to utilize these resources to ultimately reach their end goal, which for us is to really help students get to graduation. So that's kind of the, the mission of our office in student support and advocacy. Whitney, if you could go to the next slide, thank you. Um, and we do a lot of different things in regards to outreach and trainings, but the thing that we, um, when I started in my role um, and kind of like understanding what CARES, you'll hear me say CARES or case management, same thing. Um, but here at TC, we call it CARES management. But in thinking about CARES management, um, the first thing that we really wanted to do was really think about um, what the purpose of um, the, the initiative would be. And for us, it came down to connect, um, assess, respond, educate, and support. What that really means is we want students, either themselves or for community members, to help students connect to CARES. So that way we can assess and see what issues and concerns are happening with the student, figure out how to best respond so that we can help to educate and support them again to reach their goals while they're here at TC. Um, but this is, uh, as you can see by everyone that's here, this is not something that uh, one office is responsible for or one person or one team. It really is um, a network of uh, professionals that come together. So part of the CARES um, initiative is also having our CARES team. Um, the CARES team is a group of people throughout the college that come together once a week and really to talk about students of concern um, that we might want to make sure that we are, are able to talk to about all of these different areas, as you can see here. I realize there's no legend here, but basically it's the Office of Diversity and Community Affairs, Public Safety, the Provost Office, Graduate Student Life and Development, um, our Disabilities Office, my Office in Student Support and Advocacy, um, Office of International Students and Scholars, the Registrar's Office, and the Office of Residential Services. It's a mouthful, but it just gives you an idea of all the different touch points that a student might encounter um, or different offices that they might encounter during their time here at TC. And really what we do when we come together is really to gather information. When we receive any referrals um, about a student or self-referrals, what will usually happen is a week before our meeting, um, I'll send out um, a list of uh, referrals that we've received. And that way people can kind of gather information if there's any students that's on their area's radar. We all come together every Monday and just talk about um, other things that may come up for students that pop up on our radar. And really that conversation is really, surround, uh, really focused on what's going on and what are the resources that we can um, share and provide for the student. If you go, can you go on to the next slide with me? Um, and part of that team, once we assess, 
Um, that really then comes down to what our CARES management approach will look like. Um, I just want to highlight we are non-clinical, uh, which means we are not counseling. Um, we work with, with connecting students to our counseling psychological services office here at TC. Um, but we're non-clinical professionals that really come together to try, really try to figure out what is happening with a student and how best to respond so that we can provide them support. We're goal-oriented and strengths-based. Um, and what this really means is whenever we receive a referral, we meet with a student one-on-one um, -on -one for 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the time needed, to really talk about the initial um, concern that was brought to our attention, but then also asking questions about other things that might be taking place, whether it be financial, whether it be family, whether it be um, classes, kind of and kind of where they are in regards to getting to graduation. So we're really, again, looking at the whole student and asking questions, not just about the initial referral or concerns that I brought up, because we do know that they're, that students are affected um, by many various areas um, when it comes to how, they, um, how it affects them academically. So as you can see, we connect, um, we've, once we meet with students, we also then connect them to resources. Um, to make sure that they are connected to the appropriate resources to help them. And then we also then have follow-up meetings and that can be um, a meeting a week to two weeks after. For some students, it might be once a month meetings for the semester, just to make sure that we the resources we're providing are working for the student. Um, and if there are other things that come up and other resources that are needed, that we're making sure the student um, has that information as quickly as possible. Uh, because we work with students in really kind of thinking about being goal oriented and strengths based um, to kind of help manage any crisis or situation that may come up. Um, this is a voluntary, um, we always we invite every student that we feel that it's appropriate um, to, to meet with student support and advocacy, um, but it is a partnership. So with any partnership, we will extend the invitation, sometimes multiple invitations, just to make sure that um, you know, students kind of get inundated with emails and phone calls, but we want to make sure we make every effort to connect with the student. And then um, if, yeah, and, and, and then that's why um, we want to make sure that uh, students really want to be part of this process um, because it's not mandated, mandated, it's really voluntary. So um, the only time it would be mandated is if there's a hospitalization and we just need to meet with the student when they return just to make sure that they have a care plan in place. Um, and then also if they're um, assigned to or sanctioned to meet with um, our office for conduct. And usually it's not to talk about the conduct situation. Um, it's really to talk about resources um, that they might need to be connected to because of something, um, concerns or, or issues that come up um, as they've gone through the conduct process. Um, so this is kind of everything that I've said. This is a visual of what that would look like. We receive a CARES referral. And for us, because we are non-clinical, um, we have elected to use the NABIDA risk rubric um, because we wanted to make sure that we had a rubric that was objective and was able to provide us with guidance in regards to what level we would um, assign a case that comes in. Most of the cases that come in are mild or um, moderate. And when it falls into that area there, it's immediately just an invitation to meet with student support and advocacy, for moderate, that might be something we would bring up to our CARES team just to see if there's other information that um, would be necessary to have um, before meeting with the student to talk about support resources. Um, and then once we get to elevated and critical, elevated here really is um, situations where what I what I think about this is if there's a welfare check that needs to take place, whether it's a phone call or a knock on a student's residential door because of the referral that we received, there's just a, a, a little higher concern. So we just want to actually make sure immediately that the student is uh, or as immediate as we can connect to the student that they're OK. And then the critical response here is um, the emergency team would re really um, be uh, would engage in this. And uh, public safety actually is, uh, public safety and Tom um, uh, will actually engage the emergency response team. And then we have a, a way that the emergency response team um, responds to critical situations. And usually with critical situations, it's involving NYPD, uh, EMS for assessments that need to take place um, more immediately. So just to give you a visual of what that looks like. Um, so you're wondering, Lama, how do, how do you find out when students need support? Well, um, on our webpage, we also have advertising uh, flyers throughout campus. 
and our e and and on our eboards. But when you, if you could do me a favor and just click on the button there that says I'm concerned about a TC student. So it takes you to, um, and then it takes you to our website that talks about different student resources and whatnot. But I really want to just highlight, um, if you scroll down here and click on that button again. Hopefully, yeah, um, this is the form that students, um, so this, this form here is for when a community member is concerned about a student. And then we have another form for when a student is wanting and looking for resources. Um, if you could just scroll down a little bit, you'll see here we have like some demographic information we ask. Um, and then these are kind of the categories that we have students select. This helps us with our data in regards to how many can, different types of issues and concerns that we have coming in. Um, and then if you scroll down a little bit more, uh, we also ask uh, community members if the student is aware that the referral is being submitted um, and or if they would uh, like to be anonymous. So we can't provide a like, guarantee uh, anonymity because if Dennis is the only person I've ever shared my concern about, I kind of the student will kind of know that Dennis maybe have been the one to submit it. So, um, and usually when we get these from community members, we also then will reach out to the person that submitted to have a conversation and to to actually discuss the best way to do outreach to the student because because it is voluntary. We want to make sure that we're being effective in how we're reaching out to the student. And they're not just getting um, a kind of like a blindsided email about meet with student, uh, student support and advocacy. Thank you, Whitney. So that's what our form looks like. The referral form looks very similar, um, except for the, the bottom two questions about being anonymous. Can you go to the next slide? Yeah, so that is um, everything in regards to student support advocacy and, and our TC CARES initiative, which really was an, an initiative that is a collaboration with public safety. Um, and for us, we utilize the referrals that come in to really figure out how to best help students. What we've seen just real quickly in regards to some data, um, because we started last spring is when the initiative um, was started, um, we were still getting um, emails and whatnot before the forms were created in fall 2022. But with our new initiative, we've seen a 22% increase in the number of referrals being submitted. And within those referrals being submitted, we've seen a 47% increase of self-referrals that have been submitted. So for us, um, it, we're really continuing to work in making sure that community members and students are aware of our office. Because for the, the best way to help a student is really to get connected with them early. It's really hard when when uh, there's a concern that comes up like two weeks before the end of the semester, options become um, limited in regards to the cares and support that we're able to provide at that time. So uh, that is how we look at providing TC cares support um, for students here at TC. So hopefully that helped to educate you all a little bit about what that looks like here. Great. Thank you so much, Lemma. Um, thanks, Dennis. Thanks, Robin, for the really valuable information. Um, Lemma, you mentioned uh, Nabita, and I know you and Dennis are really uh, very well versed on using Nabita risk rubrics to assess a variety of uh, situations. Um, and I also know that Teachers College is hosting a bit of training. Um, anything that you would like to say about that, Dennis or Lemma? Um, and and you know, I'm not sure how familiar everybody here is with Nabita. Uh, Tom, I'll I'll just chime in that we are hosting the two day um, course for best practices for uh, fit teams. Um, that class is tomorrow um, and Wednesday. Um, so not a lot of time for the audience if they wanted to go sign up, but if they did, they could certainly reach out to myself, any one of us really, and uh, we'd help get them connected with that. Uh, it's a two-day class with a two-year certification and um, definitely, as you said, a worthwhile value. Great. Thank you so much, Dennis. Yeah, really, um, it, it's been invaluable for us. Um, as a way of, of really assessing situations and then deciding like what the next steps will be, whether it's as Lemma just quickly took us through on the student side, whether the situation is mild, it's critical or something more imminent, using the Nevada risk rubric really um, has been a game changer for us in then deciding the approaches, the follow-up and the support and, and the, which protocol that we needed to follow. So thank you for that. Um, well, we do have 
plenty of time for questions. So I uh, would like to, you know, open it up to the uh, audience here with any questions that you might have. You may feel free to put a question in the chat, or you could also just take yourself off of mute if you uh, wanted to use the audio. So either way, we are fine to uh, and happy to answer some questions for you as we uh, approach CARES. Um, and I know, I guess, as we're maybe waiting for some questions to come in, um, a, you know, question I had was, um, right, so like Lemma and Dennis have both worked in higher education at even other institutions. Is this a recommended approach to handling um, situations like this? I assume so, since you brought you know, we've been able to implement this at Teachers College, but just wondering how this could vary across institutions. Either one of you want to jump in on that one? Yeah, um, I've, uh, I've been, like I said, I've been at TC for quite some time, and I think uh, at least in regards to CARES, it's always been handled very similarly, but I think actually having dedicated staff to like work with case management or CARES cases, I think that's been the shift, um, at least in student affairs. Uh, and having attended a couple case management conferences, um, it, it, every school does it a little bit differently, um, but to the core where some, some schools do it, where there is dedicated office and staff, similar to TC and other schools, I don't really know the numbers, but um, just in talking to my colleagues and other schools do it where um, there might be like a conduct office um, and CARES cases might be handled through there, but then um, kind of uh, given out to different um, uh, professionals in other areas that could also manage case uh, manage cases. Um, so it's been done in a, di a few different ways, but I do think that there is a shift in the field um, in regards to actually having case managers um, dedicated to, to meeting with students. It's almost like a mix of, um, I've seen programs where they've had social workers who are in these positions um, or student affairs um, professionals mixed with social workers, because it's kind of really a mix of the two areas coming together because we're not the we're not the professionals and providing like the clinical support or whatever it really is about figuring out what the student needs connecting them and then making sure that those resources are continued to be relevant for that student Tom I, I would add to that that uh, I've been practicing this um, probably going back since 2018 at my prior institution and um, I think the model that TC has set up is is excellent and that keeping in mind, it's a non-clinical approach. We're fortunate that we're partnered with CU at Columbia Health. So if we, you know, do need that when we meet um, most often for an elevated or critical case, we we draw that resource in. Um, we ensure that the student gets connected. Right. What's nice about this approach to CARES is, um, and what I particularly like about it from the public safety lens, is that it allows our institution to manage. Um, I'll say lower level challenges, like maybe students need help navigating academic challenges or, uh, you know, difficult conversations, maybe with faculty and such, um, food insecurity. But then what, from a public safety perspective, that's really excellent is that I always believe in practicing that, you know, before game day, the Giants go out and practice. And so we have that chance to practice and to get acquainted with one another before something happens. Um, one of our partners that isn't on the call today is ORS, right? Our residential service folks. They are so critical in what we do when public safety responds. As you said, we're not a police force. Um, we do work with groups like New York City Well, with FDNY, with their EMS teams, and, and on occasion with NYPD. And the idea is to get the student to definitive care uh, but the ORS team, they know the students well, they live in the spaces with them, um, they're able to serve as advocates for our students, and um, I think it's really nice to be able to come together as, as a team and bring that approach to helping our students. So um, I think that's why CARES works at TC. Great. Thank you so much, Dennis. Um, and 
And Robin, I mean, you are, um, you know, an expert chief human resource officer and um, came to TC from outside of higher education. And just wondering if you have any perspective, I'm sure you provided care um, in your other positions and other organizations. How does it differ for you in a higher ed setting? Yes, so coming from the private sector, I think some of the key things that we focus on are really ensuring the confidentiality. So that is why largely you'll see our support resources are actually outsourced for that reason, so that individuals feel that there's a bit of a barrier between what's going on with them at home and what's happening within the workplace. So I think that that's probably the most um, overt difference and nuance here is that a lot of the resources and support, particularly the students, which are very different than employees, are really um, can be addressed initially internally because we have the ability to make those changes within our walls, if you will. But then subsequently can outsource in terms of not outsourcing agreements, but kind of refer, I should say, individuals to the types of expertise that they may need at, a different, at different points in time. Thank you. And we are so glad that you made the leap to um, higher ed HR TCs. Uh, we're in a better place um, because of you, Robin, um, leading that area for us at the college. So um, let's see. Other any questions from the group? I mean, I have a question, I guess I could throw out to someone if you're willing to answer it. Um, how does our approach at, at TC compare to your approach um, at your institution? Is this similar or are, is this something really different? Anybody care to chime in on how you manage care and maybe how, how does it look different at your school? Okay, well, it seems like, uh, let's see, so if you do have questions, or if there are questions that, you know, might come up later, our contact information was, um, it's provided, thanks, Whitney, on this slide right here. So feel free to, you know, jot down our email addresses, if you would like to have further dialogue with us, you know, about how we're, what we're doing at Teachers College, or if you have questions about maybe how to structure this at your own institution, um, don't hesitate to reach out to any one of us. And, uh, with that, I mean, unless there are questions, we can end early and give folks some time back in your day. Uh, I really want to thank my colleagues, Robin Davis Mahoney, Dennis Mazone, and Lema Maliga for the time today and really highlighting and showcasing the really important work that we're doing at Teachers College to uh, support our entire community through challenging times, um, whether the current situation or or a, an everyday occurrence that's happening or a challenge that somebody's dealing with on a regular basis. So uh, it's great to work with these colleagues. And I thank you all for joining us. And I hope that if this is your first experience with NASPA Region 2, I hope it won't be the last. And there is the Region 2 conference coming up in June in Philadelphia, so not too far um, away from, uh, from those of you that might be zooming in from the Metro New York area, just a simple train ride down to Philly. Um, and that will be in June. More information is on the NASPA2 website about that. And if you do have the opportunity to maybe participate in the national NASPA conference, that is um, going to be in March in Seattle. Okay. Well, thank you all so much. Thanks again, Lemma, Dennis, and Robin. Really appreciate your time today. And we will see you all. Um, I'm sure at some future NASPA events in the future. So thanks so much for joining us.